everybody. This is Pam at the Paper Outpost. Yes, that's where we are. And this is Junk Journal Craft Chat Friday. This is where we draw two scrappy contest winners for paper scraps and fabric scraps. And I'm answering your crafty questions from YouTube today. And what else? We're making altered paper clips. The spin on it today is we're going to be using words and numbers just for fun just playing with different things here and I'm always in need of these so um, come on along for the ride um, and let's see okay so I've, I cut up some cardstock that I had I'm going to use this as the base I'm going to get my little my little Fabrifix glue thing here and you guys always send me such great tips for uh, making this better and I I I'm too lazy. I, I don't follow them, which I should, because they're great tips. Like somebody suggested to use the cap of a water bottle on the inside at the bottom, up, like open up, and, and just glue that so that when that fails, you just put your glue bottle there so you don't lose so much glue. That's actually a very brilliant idea. Haven't enacted it yet. Lazy pants here, because mine, mine has a, like glue up to about here, so I'd have to make a new one. And that's where I get log jam. So when I make a new one, which will happen at some point, might not happen for a year or two, <laughs> but uh, it'll happen at some point. So these, I'm just gonna fold them in half to make some uh, little bases. And these are just, ran they're not any specific size. They're just the scraps that I had, cut them up. Let's put them to work. Um, and let's see what we can make. Okay, well, let me grab some paper scrappy things over here. Okay, what do we got? Okay, this is all interesting stuff. Yeah, let's grab that. Looks like it needs to be, needs to find a home. I got this stuff. So this is random book pages, old pages. Here's like a little page from a bird book. Somebody's drawing. And uh, the little life cycle of uh, um, some little baby birds, what they look like. I like to use field guides and bird guides and things like that. I'm a big nature nut, so that's always fun for me. Um, I got some regular old paper clips here, which are awesome. I think somebody gave, gave me these, so thank you very much. And I will put them to good use because you can never have too many paper clips, right? Okay. What was the deal? Put the paper clip on first. Yeah, it, it, you know, you think I make a thousand of these and I can remember the process. One paper clip. Um, some glue. You could use any glue here, really, but I like this one because uh, the Fabrifix glue because it, it grabs fast. It's a clear silicone glue. Fabric to fabric, fabric to paper, paper to paper. And let me just bang out a bunch of these. We'll do it more mass making style today. Um, I've got to be able to pick up the paper clip. That's the hardest thing for me now. Oh, I see I did it wrong already. I, um, okay, we're going to pay attention now. Pam is now paying attention. She is putting the paper clip on first, the small loop on the inside. Gluing, gluing. And there's 101 ways you can make these little bases, but this is just a very easy, effective, way minimal steps lots of fun wouldn't it be cute to sew around one of these and just have that and you could just rubber stamp a word on it oh that would be so pretty maybe we'll try that just to see what it looks like you have to be careful not to sew over your paper clip um that might be cute that one's done <clears throat> paper clip on first pam paper clip on first okay let's answer a question uh janie anderson asked pam will you do more steampunk punk junk journal ideas. Sure, I love steampunk. Um, yes, um, we can play with that uh, theme more. It's very pretty if you like the old, Vic I think it's from Victorian times. Um, kind of think old Monty Python, the beginning of the show with those, you know, the men peddling with the umbrella above their head, you know, kind of that look dark, grungy, dingy, um, riveted together things. Um, it's kind of a cool look. I like it. Okay, let's just play with those and see how far we get. All right. <clears throat> what was I going to do? <laughs> oh, I was going to sew one. Okay, let's try that. Okay, I'm, I'm being bold here and I'm, I'm going to... Oh, now i got to move everything. Bringing in the sewing machine. It is right here. I try and keep it close so it's easy access. Uh, oh, we got a short cord. Short cord alert. What's going on? Oh, what's going on? Okay, hang on. We have a... What? Oh, oh hang on. I'm stuck on something down here. I'm down below the desk. Okay, I'm free. Oh, I just unplugged my sewing machine. I'll plug it back in. Okay, I'm back. Yes, that's how well organized we are around here. Okay, we got it fired up. It made the sewing machine 
coming to life noise, which is always good. <clears throat> All right, let's just see how this goes. Just get a white one. All right, I'm just going to, well, let me put you, you can't see. Um, I'm just going to sew. And for those of you who are timid to sew, I, I encourage you to go for it. And remember, it's only a tool, a sewing machine. Many, many people have come before you. So I thought I was a non-sewer and then I just decided to get one and embrace the whole process. I'm going to go over a zigzag here. Oh, I've got white threads. Great. That's going to not show up at all. Um, well, we'll just, we'll just try. Oh, okay. I need to go closer to the edge as I'm a very poor seamstress who has a lot of gumption to give it a go anyway, even if it doesn't work out. So there we go. Going to turn now. Oh, that looks kind of cool. I like that look. This is cute for the uh, altered paper clips. Huh. I don't think I've ever sewn them before. <clears throat> you just never know when an idea is going to come flying out. Okay, now I have to be very careful here not to sew over the paper clip. How do I do this? I have no idea. Okay, I'm going to start sewing. I'm going to get close to the paper clip. Now I'm going to sweat. I don't want to break my needle. Don't break your needle. Stop. I'm going to lift it up. This is probably totally wrong. I'm going to jump over the paper clip. I'm going to go down. I'm going to gently put my needle down to see if I'm past the paper clip, which I think I am. I don't hear any loud clinking noise. And I'm sure all the seamstresses are saying a better way to do this. And please put your comments below on how to get around that little issue because um, there we go. It's done. Uh, where are my scissors? Here we go. I'll show you the finished product as soon as I trim all the little tails. <coughs> I think this is really cute, actually. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's a little, you know, frayish because that's the way I sew. And I, I, you know, I'm not very good at keeping the little tails out. But I'm sure you would be much better. There we go. Well, I think that's really cute. And, and then you could daub it up. Maybe if you want it to show up a little bit more. And then we could put a word on it. Or something, you know? Yeah, let's give it a little back on. So okay, so back over there, sewing machine. Come on down here. Don't turn accidentally turn everything off. You know you've done that before. I really like this um, gothic style. I, I think it's German. Um, so let me just tear a little piece out of this. It should fit in the center. That's words, right? That's words. Words and numbers today. I think I'm going to put that there like a little. Oh, that looks so cute. I just love that. I just love that. Okay, let's use our Scotch Create glue stick. Dun, da, da, da. Permanent glue stick. Just my favorite. Um, don't have any affiliation with the company, but just like the stuff. And I'll tell you what I like to use. Uh, but you go try out your own glues because everybody has certain things they want from a glue and we're all a little different when it comes to glues. But I get asked about glues a lot, so I try and give you that info. And um, Okay. I mean, I could just kind of like that, but I think I'm going to put a number on it. And what kind of number are you going to do? Okay, let me come over and here's my little number. That's not my number box. But I do see a number in there. There's these numbers. I could put those on there. But, eh. Okay, well, maybe. How about 96? I don't know what this is for, but um, I found this little row of numbers. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Should we ink it? Why not? We're here. And we're ink I should have inked it in black, I think. Just to give it a different contrast from the other. Okay, I'm coming back in with the black. Okay. Yeah, I kind of like that. Let's just do that. I don't know. There's something highly rewarding about that. And these are those, those weird little things I could just make all day. All these little... And, and every one is a palette unto itself. There you go. I mean, you can keep going, but I'm, I'm good with that one. All right. That was like the super fancy one of the day. Let's ask, answer another question. What you got? What you got for me? Okay, Rhonda Palmer says, I, for one, love the blithering. She's referring to my excessive speech talk because I had somebody kindly let me know the other, or the other day, stop all the talking. <laughs> and uh, um, she said, since that's me to a T, I'm fine with it because I'm the blitherer, the blitherer. And she has little musical notes. That's funny. Did you sing too? Sing it too? I, I think I have to sing that. That's my brain. I love this project. Okay, she's talking about Got Junk Mail, Easy Paper Organizer, um, which just came out this week. 
Sweet Peas Crafting in the Burbs says, hey, sis, is it one of Harry's songs? LOL. You know what I mean. Oh, I think she likes Harry Connick Jr. Is that the right Harry? I hope so. Um, no, it's a modern song. It's, um, um, I'll, I'll think of the name in that I, and see if I can, I'll, I can remember it. Uh, but yeah, you know how you just got a song stuck in your head and you can't get it out no matter what? Yeah. That was me yesterday. So don't, I'm not thinking about the song. La, 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 la. Not the song. Okay. Um, Norma Favela asks, Hi, Pam. Do you ever f feel that you don't want to use the material because it is so pretty? Yes. Yes. I get stuck in don't use your pretties all the time. And then I, I try and get myself to use the pretty because what? why are we saving them for what? You know? I mean, I strongly recommend you get brave. You put on your big girl pants or your big boy pants or whatever pants you got. And use your pretties because then you release them to the universe. And what does that do? That allows room for more pretties to come in. But if you save all your pretties, you're going to be um, um, squashed by your craft hoard. So, yes, in things come in, let them flow out, and feel good about using your pretties. That's why you got them, so that you can feel good about using them, be excited, be happy about these fun things. It's a mental switch you've got to flip. You just do it. And you're like, you got to like be like, okay, I did it. I can do it. Now I can do it again. Let me use a little bit of that, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And just let it go. Just let it go into the universe. It's a good thing. Good feeling. A good practice. Um, Sarah Payan, uh, as always, do your videos gave me the giggles. Wh quick question. When one purchases the print and mail option for your digikits on Etsy, do they also gain access to the digital files for future prints at home? No, unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. I only print them out and mail them to you, and I do 10 digikits at a time, which gives you 50 printed pages on lightweight cardstock. Um, and, but if you did want the printable um, <coughs> ones, then you've just got to buy those at the, I think they're 275 right now, each for each digikit. Um, so I guess that answers that. And um, Irma Gonzalez asks, what's good to get ink off your fingers? Well, if you use ink like Distress Ink, which is just dye, okay, um, or Distress Oxide Ink, which is dye and pigment. And I'm trying to, oh, yeah, okay, this is what Distress Oxide looks like. These will both wash off with soap and water. And if um, you get stuck at all or anything like that, or it won't come off, which sometimes happens, like if you have dry skin or gets embedded in your skin, sometimes if, uh, I use this little, I have a kitchen scrubby, and um, the extra abrasiveness from the kitchen scrubby can sometimes clear out any little, you know, dry skin absorption of ink. If you use the stays on ink or that, any kind of ink that is water repellent or water um, resistant, you're, you're probably going to want to use some kind of solvent, which really isn't that great for your skin, but like an acetone or an alcohol or something like that to help break the bond of the glue on the glue, break the bond of the dye on your, or whatever it is, on your, um, your hands. But that's another reason why I stay away from those because they're just too darn hard to get off your hands. But, um, yeah, and apparently it doesn't stick to nail polish. So, um, this, this kind of ink. It just washes off in the sink. So it's not that bad. It's really not that bad. You just kind of got to know you're going in with, you're going to get messy fingers and that's half the fun. Okay. Thank you, Irma. That was a great question. Um, Nikki Mar Marriott asks, where do I get those bulb pins? Thank you. Those little tiny bulb pins are also called, well, I'll just show you one, bulb pins, gourd pins, eggplant pins. That's another name. They have a million names. Um, garment pins. Um, these things. You can look them up on Amazon, eBay, Etsy. Um, you can probably find some in the craft stores or in Joanne, something like that, because these are used for, you know, fabric things. But um, you can buy them in packs, different colors. Um, yeah, that's where you get them. And do you, oh, okay, Joan Petit, Petit uh, asks, do you ever make anything with bright colors? Um, I have experimented with bright colors a, a couple times. It's not my favorite go-to place, but um, I know a lot of people really like the neons and the brights and the intenses, and um, that can be a lot of fun. Um, really, it's the same process. You're just switching with bright colors. So I try to invite myself to try things that are out of my normal realm just to give myself a little spice or have a little splash a bright color or something like that inside my journal, like a surprise page, something like that, or maybe some bright ephemera, some bright note cards, some bright 
envelope, something like that to give it a little pop or a pizzazz. Um, but I do naturally gravitate back towards the whole vintage, you know, Victorian kind of color palette. It's just my happy place. But it's all good. I mean, do, do, if you do it, if you like that and that's your style, go for it. A lot of people do that one. So you're not alone. You're not alone. Okay, these are all ready to be made. Okay, my little YouTube thing, come back. I would like to see their questions. <coughs> Sorry. Um, Sharon Wilson asks, Hi Pam, I'm starting an idea book and I was wondering where I could get your list of ideas that you have been working from. Have you posted it somewhere? Your videos have always been so inspiring to me. Thank you for what you do. Uh, well, thank you, Sharon. Um, my list of ideas. Okay, I have a couple sources for you. Um, there, I have a page list of ideas to help you break the blank page. And that list is on, if you sign up for my free monthly email newsletter, the link is down in the description box below. At the very bottom of the page in the freebie section, there is a link to the list. And there is a video playlist series that I'm making to go down that list and make something. I, tr I tr The goal is I'm trying to use each idea four different ways in your book. So you can see, take one idea and it will look different on four different pages in your book. Um, I'm slowly working my way down that. I'm getting there. And um, that is called the Never Endless Page Ideas or something like that. It's, and the Never Endless, I know that's it, grammatically incorrect, but I'm just going with it because it's, it's, it's out there. It's done. And it's now itself. It, it has its own home. <laughs> so, yeah. And then I do have a, not a giant, but I have, um, it's right here. This is my, like, just like my gathering of ideas, like a random ideas. Um, I log them in here when I get them. And that way, when I'm short on, of an idea, I can just go back in here and take a look and, and like find something like, oh, I could do that, you know? Um, so that I don't publish, but um, uh, just because it would take forever for me to type all that out and put it somewhere. But um, you're going to see 99% of those in my videos. So if you're looking for a lot of just basic ideas on how to make ephemera and things like that. I would start with my playlist called, called um, Using Up Book Pages. There's a, there's a bunch in there, like probably 75, 80 videos, just by taking a, like a regular book page and the fun things that you can do with it and make ephemera. So if you have access to fiction books, nonfiction books, it doesn't matter. They don't have to be fancy or old books or anything. Anything... Uh, any book page will work, and um, you can have lots of ideas and ways to create that way. All right, let's make another one of these, because we made a whole one. Look at us go. Okay, um, I don't think I'm just going to angle cut this one. I don't know why. Just trying something different here. I'm now trying something the same with this. So I'm making a, like a little picture frame or something in here. And there's already some wording. This is a pretty little flower. Maybe you need to go on there, but I don't know trim you a little shorter. Well, you are not a word or a number. What are you doing here? We, oh, you're going to add a word or a number? Okay. Apparently it's, it's talking to me. Um, what? You didn't hear it? What's the matter with you? Clean your ears. <laughs> this is vintage photo. Look, I found the old vintage photo. It's still here. It's probably dry. Let me get my squirt bottle. Where's the squirt bottle? Rotate your head. It can't be far. Here it is. Okay. I just squirt them with water if they get dry because there's usually a lot of pigment or ink. See how it comes to life. It's like really, there's a lot in there. You just reawaken it. Okay. Oh, I even sprayed over the background. Look, I, I did art and I didn't even know I was doing it. Um, okay. I just glue it on there. There we go. Got this baby. And we are going to put a word or a number on here. Don't, I'm not going to leave you hanging on this one. No, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. Okay. Well, there's some words already, but that, I'm not counting that. Oh, I have the cutest little bird there. Okay, let me go into my, this is my little word bucket. Uh, there are other things in here there that are not words. Please don't no, notice or chastise me for that because I just, it's the way it goes sometimes. Um, okay, what have I got? That's kind of cool, little quotes. Okay, all right. Here's a half a quote. Here's, never buy anything from a rude salesperson, no matter how much you want it. Yeah, there you go. Somebody's advice. I'm just going to buy, never buy anything. I think that's kind of funny. <laughs> never buy anything. That's a, that, that, you know, if you just like tell yourself that all day, you're going to save some money. Yeah. 
Um, that's kind of funny. We'll, we'll let whoever receives the journal figure that one out. Um, okay, I'm going to use the black on this one just to give it a little different. Never buy anything. Well, you could beg, borrow, or steal. Okay, maybe I'll, I'll just put it right along the bottom there. How about that? That's kind of cute. You want to come closer? Yeah, that's good. And it can even hang off. It doesn't have to be right on it. It doesn't have to stay in the confines of the boundaries. I mean, you have to remind yourself it is okay to color outside the lines, everybody. We can do that now. We're adults. Okay? And I think I put a little number in the corner just for fun. I think I'll do a rubber stamping number this time. How about a 25? Nothing wrong with a good old 25, right? I think I'm, I would like to... Or maybe I'll do it in pink. Probably should do it in black, but I'm going to try it in pink because... I wouldn't normally do that, but I'm, I'm going to do it. Stamping. Oh, that's kind of cute. I like it. There we go. I mean, that's it. That's it. Okay. We have two. Oh, those are fun. Yeah, I have way too much fun at this, and I think that's probably why I keep making these things. It There should be illegal or, you know, you should, you know, there should be, I don't know, restrict quotas. Let me go back. Okay. There should be quotas. <laughs> so here's the two we made. Um, what time is it? Okay, so let us uh, answer some more questions. Um, oh, 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 Deanna Bates says, instead of a footsie, I had a lemon drop. The end was a lemon, kind of a jump rope thing. Would that, why would anyone do that, LOL? Yeah, it, I, I, thank you for the memory recall. The, uh, I love that because uh, I remember the footsie, and I think I vaguely remember the lemon drop. Those were so much fun, and they had no purpose other than fun. Gotta love that. Don Drijansky. Any ideas for elastic banding that they use for a tourniquet when they draw blood? It's weird, I know, but I think there's got to be something to use it, it for. Um, LOL. That's a great idea because, as we know, everything is a craft supply until proven otherwise. And the first thing that comes to mind is somehow a wrapping for your journal if you want something that's a little bit snug. <clears throat> now... The way you would actually close it, I don't, I don't know if you'd want to tie it like that because that might be difficult for somebody to get done and undone, but maybe you could Velcro, like do a little Velcro tab or something like that so it's just easy to pop open and closed. And it could also expand and contract according to the how much goes in the journal. Maybe you're going to make a journal full of stuff and somebody gets it and they want to do a lot of writing so they're going to remove a lot of the stuff. It will decompress and then they can use this to seal it or they want to add their own things back possibly and then it grows again and they can seal it. I don't know, just a fun idea. Um, but that's actually a great resource. I never thought about that one before. Um, you must get a lot of blood draws. <laughs> um, Della Whirl. I'm just curious. How do you reload your Tim Holtz ink pad? Okay, let me show you how I reload it. I call this the easy way. The not rocket science way. And, okay, so here is my... This, I don't know if you can read it, but this is walnut stain. It's kind of hard to read, but this one probably needs a little shot in the arm. And uh, this is the Distress Ink uh, re-inker or the reloader or the little glass dropper bottle full of ink. So I guess it's cheaper to buy um, this and refill these than to just keep rebuying these. I don't know. Now, I, I heard from Frugal Crafter that five glass topper glass um dropper fulls is what you want so you flood you flood it okay so i i like start around the outside and i'm gonna flood okay it takes a, a second or two to absorb but it, it doesn't take forever one two three oh okay i'm messy three four now i know it looks like a lot and it is Five, but then you you're gonna let it sit for a while. You don't use it right away because it's it's it needs to absorb into the pad. And but it, it doesn't take forever, but it it, does, it will happen. And then we'll just set that aside. And I don't know, maybe it'll be absorbed by the time we're done this video. And I will remember to double check. <clears throat> you know, I'll leave it open so I can remind myself. Okay, let's make another one. Um, okay, what do we do with this one? Maybe we'll do pretty edges. Let's get our little fan. What are you? I haven't missed you in a while. Oh, here's a, another paper edge scissors that I completely forgot about. I have hanging in front of my face. Which one is this? Apparently paid 75 cents for it. It was quite a whopping deal. A Fiskar paper edge er, in Majestic. I'm going to see if I can cut through two pieces of um, 
There. I think I'm only going to do one side. I think that looks really pretty. And I'm going to emphasize it. Okay. Just give it a little pizzazz. And I had the cutest little bird. Where did you go? Uh, cutie little bird? Where are you? Uh, hang on. If I can find him in like two seconds, we'll use him. If not, we'll go elsewhere. Oh, apparently he doesn't, he doesn't want to play today. Oh, but we have you. Okay. All right. Well, you will do some different things today. I have this, uh, this Tim Holtz little guy here. Maybe we'll put him on the side. He looks really cute there. He's just hanging out. That's my, my orientation is correct. And he's going to cover this stuff, which works perfectly. And that gives me some room to put some things here. Like I have this number of 74 cents I could put off to the side there. That might be fun. And these are just random little bits and pieces. And then maybe a word. I'm going back in my little, um, there's a nice word, peace. How about that? We'll just take that word. Um, or how about I love you? That's nice too. That looks nice with the colors here. Okay, maybe we'll do that. So there we go. And maybe we'll just ink that on the edges. Give it a little oomph. Okay. And now we're going to do this. And I think after we complete this one, it is time for our crafty, our scrappy winners to be announced. We're going to draw. I draw them from the previous week's, um, previous Friday's craft chat. So all you need to do to enter is enter a comment in this craft chat. You can enter as many comments as you want. And even if you want something, you can still enter comments. The drawing for these comments will be next Friday. So that's how it works. And then if you win, you contact me by the following Thursday with your name and your mailing address and let me know whether you won the fabric or the paper scrappy contest and then I will mail your prize out to you. It's pretty easy. Okay, there we go. We have that. That's awesome, right? Okay, we have completed three. And thank you for mercifully spending time with me to make these. And, okay, let me do a little desk rearrange here. I'm going to pull my computer down. Oh, found the bird. Too late. Okay, I have my computer down and this is for the fabric scrappy contest. And wait, we have 570 comments. Okay, here we go. Ready? Go. Oops. So, okay. Who is it? Do you see your name? Do you see your name? Do you see your name? Mama E, congratulations. You are the winner of the Fabric Scrappy Contest. Okay, so just follow the directions I gave earlier and let me know. And you are the winner. Congratulations. Now we're going to scroll down here, pick another winner, and we're going to do the Fabric. No, we're going to do the Paper Scrappy contest winner. Where's the where's the thingy? I'm trying to find it. Okay, there it is. Ready? One, two, three, go. Da 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 da. Is it gonna be you? Is it gonna be you? Is it gonna be you? Shelly Williams of Williams and Company. Congratulations! You have won the paper scrappy contest. Okay, so there you go. Hold on. And now a word from our sponsor. I'm not a sponsor, Mom. I'm a cub reporter. I'm learning how to be a journalist. I'm going to journalism school, and I report on the happenings around the paper outpost in our home. And, and what are the happenings today, son? There was a squirrel in the kitchen window that mom needed to know about, and I told her. And I told her, and I told her, and I told her, and she didn't do anything. She didn't even flinch. It was like, it didn't matter. I, could, I can't understand that. Didn't she see the squirrel? Didn't she see him outside the window? He, he looked like he was up to no good. And um, he's kind of like my friend because we see each other almost every day. Yep. Excuse me. And um, I think he kind of likes me. <laughs> or maybe it's a she. I don't know. Everybody thinks I'm a she. So, you know. That's the way it goes sometimes around here. But I love you guys. Happy crafting. And I'll see you next time with my next report. I'm apparently wide awake today. <laughs> okay, thank you, sunshine. You are a sweet pea. All right. So, welcome to everybody who is new. Welcome to everybody who has been here. If you don't know, you're going to get to hear it again. If you do know, you're going to get to hear it again. You can click off. Feel free. That's fine. If you don't know, I have a free monthly email newsletter that... Um, uh, why would you want to sign up for that? The link is down below in the drop-down description box. You get a free digital image emailed to you every month. That you can print out at home and use in your artwork any way you like. You get a checklist of supplies to look for while you're junk journaling. You, uh, um, 
a note from the bookmaker which explains what a junk journal is and how to use it and you can change the font or the text and make it your own or use it mine with my blessings uh, you get a page list of ideas on how to break the blank page and that is married with that never endless book page ideas playlist on my channel and um, so you can actually see them in life what what on earth I was talking about um, but -da -da. I will finish that list I promise it's on the list <laughs> it's on my other list um, I have an, my videos come out Mondays Wednesdays Fridays and Saturdays 7 a.m. Eastern time my podcast that's more interesting to look at than my flappy fingers um, my podcast's new audio material comes out Tuesdays and Thursdays. If you're looking to find my podcast and you don't know where the links are, just Google the Paper Outpost podcast and it will come up. And um, you can watch it on many different platforms. Uh, but if you watch it on Spotify, you can also watch video podcasts on there. And um, I have an Etsy shop. So when I have journals and bundles and kits and fun things like that ready for sale, I put them in there. Sometimes I just pop them in there and I don't tell anybody. And sometimes I make a big video and social media splash and tell everybody. So just come on by and take a look every once in a while. You never know what you're going to find. I also sell digi kits, which are printables. So if you want a theme, like you're working on owls or something like that um, I've got over 200 now they're all five pages each multiple different images and you can they're on um, you can print them out at home if you want me to print them for you I will do that I do them in batches of 10 digi kits um, you just give me the names of the digi kits uh, I, sorry there's no drop down list you have to write out the names or type it out either through Etsy message or to my email address which is da, 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 da. I could really write this more neatly Pam at the paper .com, and send me your list that way and then just buy the print and mail option you don't need to buy the individual digi kits and that also includes free priority mail shipping okay just to give you an update on where we have absorbed that's where we're at right now and when you first go use to use this be do a couple like stamp and stamp off on some scrap paper because it might be a little overly soaked probably be better tomorrow um, it will distribute itself the ink will distribute itself evenly through all that a spongy pad thingy and a felt pad thingy and um, I sell fundals which are collections of old and interesting paper it looked like this it also includes free priority mail shipping and uh, so you can get a packet of very fun and interesting items to put in your junk journal if you're a collector or you like old antique ledger old checks old receipts postcards black and white photos, tea cards, and a whole plethora of other things. Um, very fun packs to play with. And um, if you are looking for things that you see me use here, um, I have an Amazon shop with links to most of the things under my favorite tools and supplies category. I try and find the links if I can and put them in there for you. That does help my shop, but you do not pay more for using my links for those items. So there you go. And thank you to everybody who has purchased with those links. I also have a t-shirt shop. If you like the phrase create with reckless abandon or everything is a craft supply until proven otherwise, you can get that on a t-shirt, a sweatshirt, a zip tootie, a mug, a tote, or a water bottle. And all the links are down below to do that. And... Um, you can find me on Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook. Come and join our Facebook group, the Paper Outpost Facebook group. We're doing weekly and monthly challenges as well as seeing what you guys make from these videos. You're so inspirational. Thank you for all you do. And remember most of all, the fun can be as simple as an altered paperclip. And create with reckless abandon, everybody. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.